What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be doing a cocktail called a red card named Desire. Now, usually when cocktails have either a pun for a name or it's trying to be witty, I find it a little bit irritating because it's just, I think it's a little overdone these days, right? I mean, it's like everything's like some pun, you know, or something just super witty or like they're trying to make a meme out of the cocktail name. Uh, personally, I like it when a cocktail has, a name has something to do with what you're actually drinking so that it's not just... Because to me, that if, if, it, if not, it's just sort of random. That being said, this cocktail name I really like a lot um, because it... So I decided to do this cocktail because it's an old Kohl's cocktail created by Brent Falco, who was the bar manager at Kohl's at the time that it was done when she had made the menu. I think this was back in 2011 or so. And, uh, and she, and, and the, and Kohl's is called the Red Car Bar because it was the start and stop of the Red Car line in downtown Los Angeles. So above Kohl's, a lot of people don't know, before it was a, before it was a, uh, you know, kind of boutique level, you know, kind of apartment building, it actually had a train station inside it. And it actually, if you stand across the street from Kohl's and look at it, and you look at the brickwork on the building, you'll actually see that like, the big arches actually used to have windows in there. And if you can kind of imagine that, it actually looks exactly like a train station. If you wanna see what it looked like as a train station, you can see this particular scene. There's two scenes in Forrest Gump that you see Coles. First, you see the original bar as it was with the Tiffany lampshades in the scene where Tom Hanks is uh, uh, had just met Lieutenant Dan in New York and it's New Year's Eve and they're there with two prostitutes and they're looking at the TV above the bar and counting down. And then all the stuff go, like all the confetti goes. So that's Coles right there. And then also before that, when he sees Lieutenant Dan for the first time, uh, like in front of the train station and Lieutenant Dan slips down that like uh, ramp, right? That's all Coles. And that ramp actually used to be where the awning is now. Did they, re was it there when they shot? For well, it was or? there when they shot it. They actually put, it's funny, when you, if you go inside Coles and look at all of the old photos from when they were shooting Forrest Gump, you actually see they set up Video Village on that ramp for the... But they didn't add so, it for the filming. What's that? They did, I don't think they added it for the filming. They might have, but I actually think that there was actually that ramp there because that ramp led up to an actual train station. And then the top floor was, so that, that top floor was the train station and Coles was underneath. Um, and so it's a nice tip of the hat to not only Streetcar Named Desire, but also to, um, to Cole's French Dip and the Red Car Line and sort of that whole history. So for me, I kind of feel like that name, that cocktail name, like it's witty and it's cool, but it also like, it like has something to do with the history of Cole's and it's, it's just like a very, it's a really well thought out sort of idea, I think. The fact that I could talk about this for three minutes, uh, you know, about the, and get into the history of Coles, I think it's pretty cool. And for me, if you can do, if you can basically have a cocktail name be a conversation piece, I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's really good. I'm gonna make the cocktail before uh, we talk more, but we will be talking some more. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do half an ounce of Marin Kina. And this is a, a lot of people think it's cherry liqueur, but it's actually not. It's an aper, it's a white wine aperitif that's been macerated with, uh, uh, it's been macerated with uh, bitter cherries and then also uh, fortified with cherry brandy. So this actually is a product that should go in the fridge. A lot of people have been asking me the difference between cherry liqueurs recently, like can you sub cherry hearing for uh, maraschino? And the answer is no, they are completely different products. And I think I may actually do a video on this because it's, just like Curacao and orange liqueur, a lot of people have been asking me about like Kirschwasser or Kirsch, Kirschwasser, which is like the German cherry U de V, and then the uh, Marin Maraschino, then the, you know, cherry hearing and all the differences between them. So I think that'll be an interesting episode. Uh, then we're gonna do half an ounce of Chinar, which is a, a artichoke based Amaro. We're gonna be doing Half an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino. And then we're gonna be doing an ounce and a half of Rittenhouse Rye. Now, the original I think called for uh, Old Overholt, but I like this cocktail with the proofier Rittenhouse. So if you guys have been watching this channel for any length of time, you will know that I kind of tend toward Overproof spirits are sort of my thing, so. But Overholt is one of your... 
Overholt's my, my, is, you know, what's funny is that like, I didn't put it in my Workhorse Spirits video, but it is very much a Workhorse bottle for me. Um, and you know, at $23 a bottle in this market, it's definitely in the right price range to be a, a Workhorse Spirit for sure. I'm not even sure why I didn't put it in there when I did. I just kind of felt like I needed to limit the amount of bottles, but I kind of feel like we need to do a workhorse volume too. Not to mention the fact that a lot of people have been asking me about new workhorse bottles. And I have definitely uh, discovered some new ones that I really like that are in the, you know, small, like the shorter price range. The thing is, is that should do one every year, like a twenty. Yeah, I, I should. You know, the thing is, is that it's it's tough to do those those um, those videos just because, you know, not to toot our own horn, but our 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 demographics are now global, and not everyone can get all of the spirits that we feature. And then also, market to market, the prices are different. So we're just gonna strain before our cocktail dies while we talk to Marius into our nice glass. I actually got these really nice glasses. Upgraded to a six ounce coupe, you guys. It's uh, from Cocktail Kingdom and I, I, I do enjoy it. It's a little bit different, a little bit more of a bowl than uh, the, uh, the Libby's. So I'm just gonna do a little lemon twist here. And then I'm gonna cut it into a nicer shape, I think. Should I do parallelogram? No. He doesn't, you, Marius, for some reason you don't like the parallelogram. Too many of them. Do something new. So what should I do? What should I do? What should I do with it? You tell me. I know you you like you like all of those really artistic, mm -hmm. like twisty things that I haven't bothered to figure out how to do. Yeah. But I kind of feel like those don't make cocktails look. I mean, they look nice, but like I don't think that those things like make cocktails look more appetizing. I really don't. That is a nice. Ba bam! How do you like me now? It's the new nice corkscrew there. All right, let's take a sip of it. Wow right into the glass. I'm gonna fish it out with my hands. Ooh, that's so good. Okay, well, let's talk about the flavor profile first before I fish it out. So what's really, really nice about the drink is the interplay between the Marin and the Chinar, which is bringing down. So basically you have the Marin, which is like this bright, cherry-like, almost tastes like rosé, kind of dry on the finish, kind of sweet. And then you have the Luxardo Maraschino drying things out a little bit. And it's funny is that somebody actually commented like, I don't know why everyone says that Cointreau and Maraschino uh, are so dry. They have just as much, um, they just have just as much sugar as like simple syrup or whatever. And that actually may be true. You know, I think this has like something like 14 grams of sugar per 750. But I gotta say that like, it does have a drying, it's sweet and it is syrupy, but it also has a, drying effect on cocktails. And that's why I think people say that. Um, and then uh, obviously of the Chinar kind of bringing down the, you kind of bringing down the, like a little bitterness in that palate, right? It's kind of acting as the bitters. And then you have the nice proofy rye, just kind of tying everything together. Uh, and I really like that first or second sip and you get that nice hit of lemon zest, which is just like, it makes it zing. It's just like super bright. It really pops. This is like a really nice sort of light, uh, sipper, I think, for the, the summertime. I'm trying to do sort of summertime stirred cocktails because I think a lot of people unfairly think of stirred cocktails as a winter kind of thing or as a nightcap kind of thing. Um, but I think that, um, you know, you know, given that these are like a little higher ABV because it's all, it's not like citrus juice and sugar, it's all booze. Um, there's some really nice light sort of like refreshing ones so that you can do at this time of year. Uh, and I think this is one of them. So that's why I did it. So there it is, the red car named Desire. So if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on, not Patreon, because we don't do that. I mean, we do kind of, but not really. You should check us out on our YouTube memberships because we started doing exclusive videos there and some pretty fun stuff. Check out our t-shirts on Teespring. We got some cool ones. And uh, yeah, I don't know. See you on another time.